around here. And I am tired of you lying to me. And I'm done. You had your chance to tell me the truth and you're lying. Stand the fuck up. Stand up. You want to tell the truth now? This footage is exclusive and subject to copyright infringement laws. For anyone watching this who believes that this is any type of standard procedure or typical in an interrogation case, I challenge you to find footage of any other incident in which the detective's behavior looks like this. You know why? Don't fuck around like that around here. And I am tired of you lying to me. And I'm done. You had your chance to tell me the truth, and you're lying. Stand the fuck up. Stand up. According to NY1, it is the policy of the Department of Justice to value and preserve human life, the updated guidance says. Officers may use only the force that is objectively reasonable to effectively gain control of an incident, while protecting the safety of the officer and others. So the question then becomes, how heavy-handed can the police get when asking questions? The answer, information that you voluntarily disclose to a police officer after you have already been properly warned is generally admissible in a trial. The key word here is voluntary. Police officers are not allowed to use physical force or psychological coercion to get you to talk to them. The days of rubber hose protracted grilling under bright lights and severe sleep deprivation are pretty much over. If police officers obtain information through any of these illegal means, the information cannot be used by the prosecutor at a trial. In addition, under the rule known as fruit of the poisonous tree. Any evidence that the police obtain as a result of a coerced statement is equally inadmissible for court. So the next question would then become why? Why would the detective put the prosecution in such a position? Now you might think that I'm not playing all of this interrogation so that you wouldn't be able to see if the suspect, Mr. Lowe, were putting people in danger in the room, maybe he was fighting, maybe he was resisting some sort, causing some kind of commotion to which Donovan Herod would need to control the environment, but you would be wrong. I have in fact not altered this in that way whatsoever. The only alterations that I have made is redacted names and also cut the video in half so that we could do two parts because this is over an hour and a half long. Maybe you've heard of Detective Dwayne Thompson, who was an actor on the television series called The First 48. Now he's better known as the detective that cost the state $1.2 million in a lawsuit due to his inappropriate actions in the interrogation room. This interrogation. And now the Dallas Police Department is taking steps to make sure it does not happen again. That case goes back to 2010. Dallas police arrested Olivia Lord on suspicion that she killed her boyfriend, though evidence pointed to a suicide. Well, she sued. And a federal jury found Dwayne Thompson was reckless and malicious with the arrest and his questioning. And for the first time, we're seeing video of the interrogation that the jury saw. Channel H Rebecca Lopez tonight has that story. You shot him. This is the interrogation video a federal jury saw. Homicide detective Dwayne Thompson accusing Olivia Lord of shooting her boyfriend, Michael Burnside. She appears distraught. If you know and I know that this don't make sense. This don't make this sense. Don't make sense. The interrogation goes on for more than three hours. He said, he says, when the suspect walked up. This is video of Thompson from the show The First 48 on an unrelated case. A month after the interrogation of Lord, Thompson arrested her for murder. I don't know what happened. You know what happened. I don't you know, know what, what happened. I do not know what you happened. You know what happened in there. A grand jury cleared Lord of any criminal charges. I don't know. Maybe it's an actor thing. Maybe these police that are put in the positions of becoming actors forget how to act when they're being police. 
Maybe it's okay for these types of fake interrogations to be on television for entertainment value. But in real life, that's not the way these things work. The way these things work is following strict procedures and standards and most definitely remaining in respect of the law. Uma benção, raios do luar. E lei, fé, e fé, e fá. Reino dos orixás, reino dos orixás. But we did it, partner. We got ourselves a real life movie star and a scum sucking real life Boston mafiosa. Mm hmm. I love Boston mimosas. What do you have to say for yourself, Mark Wahlberg? I'm Keanu Reeves. You just think you're so tough with that fancy Boston accent, don't you, punk? I don't have an accent. You ever been to Boston? I asked the questions here, Wahlberg, so you shut that fat mouth. We've been watching you fornicate all over town in public places for months. Wait a second. You guys really believe I'm Mark Wahlberg? And that Mark Wahlberg has been Running all over town, having sex? I don't think Mark would do that. Just because you are a member of the greatest boy band in the history of the world, it doesn't give you the right to slam ass courtside at a Lakers game. No matter how arousing it is. First, Donnie was in the New Kids on the Block. Second, I'm Keanu Reeves. <laughs> What's so funny? Little tiny Mark Wahlberg here thinks he's big Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is like six foot four and from Oklahoma and the baddest son of a bitch that's ever walked this planet. And don't you ever claim to be the man that changed my life with the greatest role in the history of cinema. The Coming Lake right. House. The Lake House? What the hell is The Lake House? Oh, it's a wonderful film about love and fate. Romantic love. I know, I was in both those movies. I'm Keanu Reeves. Say it again. I'm Keanu Reeves. Don't you dare say it again. I'm Keanu Reeves. Say it again, bitch. Say you're Keanu Reeves one more time, and I'm going to have John Wick come in here and shove a baseball bat so far up your dirt diggling ass that you got to call your brothers over at Wahlburgers to come over here with some toothpicks to pull out the splinters out of your spleen and your heart and your butthole. You know John Wick isn't real, right? I played that guy in a movie. You know. Although Herod and Dispinette do a really good job at portraying the inept detectives in the 2013 film Interrogations Gone Wrong, does not set aside that this is no laughing matter. When it comes to these interrogations, the law is absolutely most important here. So without further ado, let's watch Mr. Lowe's interrogation footage together. Now this is exclusive, and he has not been to court yet. This case has not been to court yet at all, in fact. Which means all parties are innocent until proven guilty in court. I will be stopping this footage here and there throughout so that we can talk about some of the details in which Mr. Lowe described to me in an interview that we had together. Uh, I needed to talk to him to be able to understand some of the factors involved as a lot of this interrogation footage by itself will not make sense. But I'm going to try to keep the cutting to a minimum and try not to interrupt for everybody to be able to watch this. Now, I think it's important to keep in mind that the detective that you see here, uh, his name is Donovan Herod. He is the star of season six of 60 Days In, um, and he's actually listed online as an actor. You'll find him as an actor before you'll find him as a detective for the Clark County, Indiana Law Enforcement Agency. 
And in his episode, he is most well known for being the officer that snuck a key into the jail. Is it ironic? I don't know. And phone, you know, I, I, that's that's key. Yeah, that's that's like the two main things you got to look forward to. Here. So what they're charging Mr. Lowe with, who is the former corrections officer that will be the subject to this interrogation, what they're charging him with is essentially he's being accused of selling a key to the inmates uh, so that they could escape. And they're saying that in this interrogation that he admits to that freely. Um, you will see that there's major discrepancies with that whole scenario and it was released to the news media and more so at this point david is coming into work uh, around 6 p.m after working a 14 hour shift on the same calendar day overnight the night before um, and he comes in and donovan sends a couple people to go grab him and drag him into this interrogation room since they need to ask him some questions and he is under the color of his agency at that point in time as an employee so in the interview that i did with david he said that what he thought was is that he was being pulled in here by his bosses to discuss you know some work situation like a work issue an issue with him at his job he didn't realize that this was actually an interrogation where they were looking at him as a criminal or committing criminal actions. The evening prior to this on his overnight shift, he was acting in the position, uh, his duties were to distribute medications and do emergency medical type things. And he's not qualified to do that. However, the jail staff is so short and not being maintained properly that they do not even have an emergency medical technician on staff for the second shift. Um, so what the agency expects its corrections officers to do is to step in and conduct any type of medical that needs to be done, including medicine distribution, which I'm not real sure if that's legal or not, but that is the position that the COs are put in. Um, and when they are going in and out of the rooms, they are being watched by a team that is in a main area, uh, the downstairs level, people that sit in a room and watch the monitors so that when the COs are in these rooms by themselves doing their routine, then they are being watched by officers uh, who are monitoring the monitoring station, the, watching the monitors and making sure that, well, they're supposed to be making sure that everybody's safe and 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 nobody's escaping or riots aren't happening or whatever. But so let's watch this interrogation footage after that understanding and see where we go from there. You mind if I leave that door cracked? Cool. Thank you. 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 Thank here, Captain of the Texas. What's your last name, buddy? L O W E. L O W E. Yes. All right, Mr. Lowe, my name is Detective Harry. I'm the Captain of Clark County Sheriff's All right. Uh, this is Investigator Discipline that we need off of the Sheriff's Office. I'm going to read you something here. I'm not explaining it to you. I can't really explain much to, until I read it to you. I'll take you go with that. And if you don't mind, I'm right handed. Mm -hmm. My right is going to be kind of sloppy to the left, so that's why I can lay a bow beside it. Location. I always thought to let people like right handed. Right there. What is today's name? Today's 24. 24. 10. 10, 24, and 21. Time is approximately 11.08 p.m. I'm 
going to be the admin of the team. Well, better not what. You have to concentrate here with her. I have her here in like a couple of weeks. My left hand, I'm giving them a bit. At this point, aside from picking on Mr. Lowe for his tattoos and his handwriting, Mr. Hare does bring up a factor saying that he has heard through the grapevine that Mr. Lowe might in, have intentions of leaving the facility, uh, quitting his job. So, you like on the fence now whether you want to stay or go? I, I do want to stay, 110%. Okay, cool. Well, this may help you out then. So, the reason I've got you down here and I want to talk to you, man, like I said, uh, I want you to shoot me straight, okay? I will shoot you straight. Because at, at the end of the night, it could be the difference between a, some, something federally or something on the state, or you go home tonight and come back to work tomorrow, okay? So, if you would, like I said, I'm trying to get soaked because I got some pictures I want to look back at. Um, talk to me about what you worked last night, correct? Yes, sir. What time did you clock in last night? Uh, it was a little bit at six. A little late? It was a little after? I think it was right at six. I'm not entirely sure on that one. And what uh, what pod did you work in last night? I worked in pod one last night. One? Is that your normal pod? Or do you have an assigned pod or anything? No, no, sir. 
they just, did they just mix you around with it? Yeah, I worked in Pod 1. Went there because we had to shake down two, or we had to shake down two Delta last night. And after that, I think it was like two o'clock, two ish, that I went to Pod 1 because I don't know where everybody else was at. And that's just one thing that I try to keep up on is. Yeah. So, so before two ish, what pod was you in? I want to say I was in three because of pill call. Pill call? Did you do pill call last night? Yes. Oh, okay. Who does pill call? Is that assigned to is different, there, different officers, that diff- nurses? Or? Yeah, different officers. Me and Officer Phillips were doing it last night. Okay. And this pill call, <clears throat> so when you come in, you check in about six or Yes, sir. And then you went straight to do pill call? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, six, well, between six. I, don't re- I honestly don't remember if, if I served shower or anything last night, but pill call is supposed to start at 7, and then right at 7, I'm usually in the med office getting things ready. I know I did pod 4 book and pod 3 last night for pill call. Okay, I got you. And like I said, is that something you do like every shift? Is, it, is every shift the same for you, or is it different? So you could be in pod 1 today, 4 tomorrow, yes, 3. And so when you come in, um, yeah. Say you started in, uh, uh, you started in what, three last, three or four last, which one? I, I believe it's three. Three, okay. You started pill call on three, and after you do pill call, is that the male and female pods both? No, sir. The female pod, well, pod four is the male and female pods. Pod three is the all male pods. Okay. So you did all, so you did all male pod pill call last night? Yes, sir. I did okay. pod three, I did pod three, book, and I believe I did pod four. Okay. So in, in these, is that just taking medicines and stuff, giving yes, Tylenol, ibuprofen, yes, or is it like hard meds? Is that right? Prescription. Just prescription. Just prescription. So when you do pill call, they just you hey now it's pill call. They come up, you check their name off, and do whatever. Yes, sir. Check what type of medicine they're giving. You get the exact type of medicine, et cetera, et cetera. And do they you know, do you hand it to them personally, or do they take it out of a drawer, or do you send no, it on a tray? Or I hand it to them. I hand it to them personally, and then they put it in their hand, and then they. You do you got to watch them. I don't know. I, I, it's, it's, it's not like I'm kind of dumb about the jail because I, I mean I work the street for anything. I work narcotics a lot of times. But I, no, I'm just saying. But I, I, I did a program a couple of years ago where I went to jail on my mm-hmm. own, and I just seen the way they done stuff. And I'm just, I just, if I'm asking because I don't know, I kind of want you to explain it to me just so I can kind of get a better understanding of it. But you're all good, brother. And you do that shit every day. I don't. So I'm gonna take your two guys' words for it. Yeah, I literally did it for like a week straight. A week, two weeks straight on my own for the entire jail. I, gotcha. I know I said I wouldn't stop this a whole heck of a lot, but I do need to stop it here because it's important to notice what Mr. Lowe just said. He did it for about a week or two weeks straight on his own. And what he's saying is that he was expected to distribute the medications for the jail by himself, meaning no other officers went into the pods with him. Uh, and in that, during the interview, Mr. Lowe described to me that the procedures to that is they are the COs are expected to go into the pods by themselves and directed that the safest scenario would be to allow the people in the monitor station to watch their backs while they leave the door propped open and go in and do the medicine distribution and like I said there are no nurses available there is no nurse staff available so the COs are being expected to do this under the jail's Policies. So after you did pill call stuff, then what the what the night consist of? After pill call, went back. I'm not sure off the top of my head if I was in. I'm just trying to recall yeah. where I'm at. Where it's, I was at. It's long hours. Like, you get, we got work 12 hour shifts? Yes, sir. I Which I yeah. work, I work till like 8 this morning. Works up a little over time. Gotcha. I'm, already right. on, I'm already on like 50 hours, 50 hours for these two weeks. Sure. Well, it ain't the money you're working at. I'm just trying to remember where, I'm just trying to remember where I was at last night. 
I was trying. I was trying to get the gist of the come in. Well, it, it, it was too because I remember having to search out, and I remember in watch his face wanting an hour out, but they were all marked. They were all marked on the board. They were all marked on the board last night. That yeah, it was top two. Okay. First half, and then I worked top one second half. And then stay over a little bit this morning, and well, yes, sir. got a couple hours of sleep, came back, done the same shit tonight. Yes, sir. I got you. <clears throat> During your tour last night, did anything different happen? Anything out of the ordinary happened? In part one? Uh, any, any time during the night, any time from the time you clocked in or from the time you left, anything or extraordinary or something that's not your normal routine? Not honestly that I noticed. I know uh, one Charlie 10, the guy in one Charlie 10 was stating that uh, they were trying to pop his door last night because I got a note. I don't know if you got that note or not. I haven't looked yet. Yeah, because uh, apparently a bunch of the people in one Charlie 10 are, are wanting to kick his ass because he's basically been telling on people in the entire pod. Right. Right. Yeah, I handed it to Applegate this morning. Okay, cool. So other than that, nothing that extraordinary in that street. Nothing I realized. So nothing, nothing major going on. The uh, what's the what's the office out front of the pod there? That uh, it, where you just it's the corrections officers can get to, not the inmates. What's that called? The pod office. Is that a pod office? Yes. Yeah. Is that still in the, hall, the big hallway there? Is that what that is the main hallway there? Yeah. You walk in and you have the pod office in there, and like the bathroom. Is that what I'm talking? You know what I'm talking about? We're like in a hallway. Yeah. What, what's that office? Outside, outside of pod three and four. It, yeah. There's a like a like a horseshoe style like an elevated desk at pod four. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay. I just kind of back. Now, according to Mr. Lowe, this pod office is actually the correction officer station. It's where all their tools are, uh, their monitors, everything they need to be corrections officers. And what they're talking about is pod four area. Um, and you might hear if they say they toss back and forth, Herod and Dispinet. Uh, the two leading detectives in this interrogation, they toss back and forth whether or not that's a secure area. Uh, and according to Mr. Lowe, the pod four pod office is actually just outside the pod door, and there is no door on the pod office, even though they keep their supplies in there. The corrections officers keep their supplies in that area. So that's the area in which this discussion is referring to here. That's out in a hallway. It's not, it doesn't have like a door or anything on it. So, Mr. Lowe, when I talked to him, I asked you a minute ago, you know, if you hand a message, he said, yeah, I hand it directly to the inmate. So, you see that inmate right there? See, yeah. See, he's grabbing into your drawer. Is that how you conduct business on a daily basis? No, sir. What happened there? He was at, that's, he was actually just showing me where his inhaler was. Showing you his inhaler? Yeah. Okay. Are you a certified medical technician or anything like that, or just just do jail stuff, Joe? I just do pill stuff. But yeah, he was just showing me where his inhaler was last night because I was trying to find it. Does that uh, does that include um, taking blood pressures and checks and stuff like that? Do you also do that? Yes, sir. That I do. Do that and then every time I check somebody's blood pressure, check somebody's heart rate, I always notify medical downstairs. I gotcha. Did you check anybody's heart rate last night or blood pressure? I uh, checked heart rate last night and I checked uh, what was his name there was another guy in there that stated he had chest pains and I called down to booking to let Sergeant Meyer know what his blood pressure was and I know Meyer said that he was going to check with the nurse in the morning he's going to let the nurse know I got you did the, how many times did you check that last night how many, how many people's blood pressure did you check I just checked Two of them, and then I checked uh, Robinson's blood sugar last blood sugar last night in three Charlie as well. I gotcha. The machine you use, that normal machine, there does everybody have access to that? Everybody use that machine, the card, that the blood pressure machines on. Is that right? Everybody. Yeah, you mean like all, all the corrections officers. Yes, we all have access to that. I gotcha. Did you have any trouble with one last night? Yeah, I had to keep I had to keep telling them to stop touching the damn machine in three Char in three Charlie, and it wasn't turning on. And I was going to go downstairs, grab the one from Book, but I was sitting there messing with it at the elevator. And then I came back once I got it turned on, and I checked. 
Yeah. Because okay. he he had made a statement that he was feeling dizzy. He was feeling dizzy, and I checked it. Like I said, I notified Meyer down in booking about his blood pressure. Is that was that is that the guy you're talking about? You checking blood? You can zoom in if you need to. I see you plugged the machine in one time, right? Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. Which one? Uh, uh, right here. Who's the, uh... You said that was in three, 3 Charlie? 3 Charlie. I literally had to keep telling him to stop touching the machine. That's in 3 Charlie? No, that's 3 Bravo. It's Charlie 4? Four. 4, four Bravo, sorry, yeah. Okay. You know, you know that's a very horrible picture. This bald headed guy here is the older guy right here. Do you know who he is? I do not offhand. You don't know who that is? No. Right. What uh, what kind of relationship do you think you have with these inmates? They treat you right? Do you treat them right? Do they give you shit? I try or? to treat them right, but I treat them fair. They give you anything for being small in nature, not a big guy, a shorter guy, a smaller guy, anything like that? Not really. Because, I mean, I treat everybody, everybody, you know, I treat everybody with respect. Respect is earned, not given. Give it, get it, right? Yes, sir. I'm the same way. I appreciate that. I mean, that's one thing I had to keep telling them tell last night just to back, back up. Because that's one thing when I'm checking somebody's blood pressure, I don't like everybody to be around it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you had five or six guys around you. And then when you came in the first time, you actually let the inmates plug in your machine and stuff, which I get that. You know, it would try to be helpful. But you're always going to be cognizant or, or aware that, that, was, that was my, that was my and to be honest with you I watched the video actually on something else and I was end up watching your video and you had people around you the whole time you had guys to your right guys to your left and you're concentrating on one inmate and you're not watching your back door you're not watching the, the tier the tower above you're not watching that, that was my thought it's just like when you know for me being on the fire department prior mm -hmm. that's just one thing I wanted to make sure his what's that you know his blood that that guy was okay. Yeah, I get that, but you got to realize when you're sitting there doing that, and you, your your attention's on that person, that inmate right there, correct? Yeah. Like I was telling you, while you was doing that, there was inmates all around your backside doing shit that you didn't see, and there's people up on the tower doing shit on the uh, what's that what's that called a walkway or whatever that you didn't see. The, walk, the walkway. Or shit, not the walkway. That's that's, that's the other guys I was looking at. That's only a single story and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other one I'm talking about, the other video I was looking at. Yeah, they're walking in now. They're, they're, they're doing shit behind your back that you should have been aware of. That put I mean, I, yeah, I mean that one I'll admit. That put yourself in danger and put the other inmates in danger too because if they did anything to you, man, then you're your pin hands up before you call for help. You got to carry radios in there. We do. You gonna have one tonight? Right here. So, oh. All right, you ain't got to say it. I put them on. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I got you. Hey, Mr. Lowe. So I, mean, I, I do apologize. Like I said, I was trying to tell him to keep away from him and everything. It's just, like I said, when I was doing him, I do I do focus on that per I do focus right, on that right. person. Right, I understand that. But like you said, your position as a corrections officer, I mean, you're responsible for yourself, number one. And then all the other inmates are in there, too, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't let yourself get sucked into that kind of stuff. But. At this point, I am going to cut out a little bit of dead spots in this video because the interrogation is almost two hours long. And there is a lot to this story that we need to cover, including allegations of rape from the female inmates, um, alleging that some of the male inmates had escaped their pod and was able to pass through a door with the key to get into the female section and allegedly commit rapes on these females but most of this is just repeat questions going back over what david's duties were for the night and all and he just kept saying the same answers you know that he was on medicine distribution duty it was his job to uh, fill in for the for the medical staff because they don't have one on on his shift so he was explaining over and over the same thing that he was doing his job uh, there was an issue with that with uh, pod 4 in that he went to take a blood pressure reading and the inmates were crowding him and going towards the door and stuff like that now remember there is supposed to be two people in the monitoring room at all times who actually have to buzz the corrections officers in 
to the pod. And then while the correction officer is inside the pod, it is the duty of those officers in that monitoring room to watch the corrections officer, watch the inmates while that officer is in there by themselves, which in most jails, the policies are that they don't put the corrections officers in the position to go into the cells by themselves, obviously. So uh, Clark County Law Enforcement Agency is slacking really badly in that. Um, that is something that was addressed on the show 60 Days In. Sheriff Jamie Knoll, who is the main author of 60 Days In, addressed it during 60 Days In trial period being over with. And he said that he corrected those issues, but apparently he has Wait, not. And the officers, if they're not in the section, you know, doing their watch tours or handing out food or medicine, um, it's picked up on the cameras um, and they immediately respond to it. Um, my goal is usually have two officers respond to help or wait just a couple extra seconds to get other officers there to control the situation. Again, I, I'm going to offer this olive branch to you, okay, Mr. Lowe? And I'm talking to you man to man, okay, now. I know I got a badge on, though, that we're in the sheriff's office, but I'm going to ask you one more time, okay? And I'm going to be really, really, really for real with you this time. If there's something we need to talk about, I'm telling you right now, it's time to do it, okay? What we talk about in the next minute is going to decide whether you're arrested and put in federal prison tonight, whether you're arrested and put in state prison tonight, or whether you go home and come back to work tomorrow, okay? Now, you're not the first person I spoke to tonight. I've been out on my day off this Sunday. This is about my fifth and a half hour that I've been here, okay? okay? I've talked to a few inmates, I've talked to a couple of COs, and I've talked to some female inmates. Mm -hmm. There's a situation I think you're aware of that we need to talk about. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you're up front with me talking about it, and let me know who's all involved in it, and I think you know what I'm talking about just by looking at it. I, I honestly do not. I think you do. Um, it, w it would settle a lot of stuff and it would be in your best benefit, okay? Mm -hmm. And it happened while you was in there doing the blood pressure stuff, while you went back in there doing the blood pressure stuff with the inmate. And you let them pop the door. You let them pop the door open or prop the door open with that garbage can. I so like, I, listen I, to me, hold on before you talk, because I want you to be 100% for sure, okay? But what I'm telling you is the truth. I told you, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to bullshit you, okay? okay? That's just a couple of pictures I've got. They're burning discs and burning videos and all that shit now, which will take longer than I have to sit down and watch all that shit. But I know exactly what I've seen. i talked to uh, several inmates already, males. i talked to several female inmates at this point tonight. Um, we're, like I said, we're going about the sixth hour here. I need you to be honest with me, son. Okay. Yes, sir. I need, I need you to tell me uh, what involvement you have with a couple of, a couple of male inmates, and then tell me. In the probable cause affidavit to this case, it does say that there were four interviews conducted on inmates, which I would assume that's what Herod is talking about here. But in the probable cause, after being questioned. Um, the inmates said that they didn't have anything to do with the deal. There was no deal for the jail keys. One of the inmates said, quote, he did not agree to pay Mr. Lowe $1,000 for the jail keys and believed Mr. Lowe was grasping at straws to save his own ass. Um, inmate stated that they escaped through the open pod door while Mr. Lowe had his back to the door and quickly returned. Once back into pod 4B, they went into the bathroom area with another inmate identified as, and I'm not going to say their name, and then took the keys from that inmate and yelled at him to return the two-way radio that he had also taken from the pod office. And here it says that the investigators... It says the video footage I reviewed is consistent with blank statements, that person's statements, in regards to the two inmates that had left and returned to the pod. So what does that mean? Well, at this point, what that means is that everyone's story is consistent thus far and that there were no deals made for the keys, that everyone is saying that the inmates got out on their own, got the keys, got back in without David Lowe seeing it, without his knowledge. That is what everyone is saying so far, aside from Donovan, 
Donovan here is dead set on believing that there's some sort of a deal made with the inmates. What the circumstances are, whether you were threatened, to wars, where they paid you, or took care of something for you, to, to allow them to do what they've done. And like I said, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm putting it all on the table, dude. I'm 100% honest with you, okay? okay? So if you want to talk about it, that's cool. I, I appreciate the fact that you'd be honest with me. If not, like I said, we'll probably go down a different road, okay? okay? You know what I'm talking about? Honestly, not on the top of my head. Because, I, I mean, if, there, if it's one thing, I know there's one guy in the four Bravo where he keeps trying to get me to pass messages, and I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing that. I have too much pride in myself and stuff like that, so. So you think it's over messages and stuff? Yeah, because he keeps trying to ask me to tell his old lady in one of the pods, tell his old lady in one of the pods, and I don't think that's What pod can He's in, he's in 4v2. 4v2, yes. 4v2. Did, when you were there taking blood pressure yesterday, did anybody leave the pod? The other new I seen, going? I seen somebody stand. I seen somebody stand at the door. I hadn't noticed that anybody had left, but I told them to get back in the sec. I did tell them to get back in the section. I didn't see them. I, I reviewed the video. I never seen you one time correct or anybody say come back in or. or yeah, actually, yeah, there was actually yeah. somebody at the door. There was somebody at the door, and I believe it was. Yeah, standing at the door, and I because I heard it behind me, and I told them to back up from the door. Okay. So, so that's, that's, that's all you think we want to talk about is the messages and stuff? I mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, the other stuff, the other stuff, yeah, I'll, like I said. Well, like the other stuff isn't what, like what I was talking to you about? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, are you familiar with like CHIRP system and stuff? When they refer to CHIRP, what that is, those are electronic devices that the sheriff has allowed the inmates to utilize where they are capable of messaging one another and people outside of the jail. Uh, did you just recently change your phone number? Uh, yeah, I got a new one. New one. Does the jail have your new number? Uh, I know Gronda has it. Gronda. When did, when did you get a new phone number? I got a new phone. I got a new phone just a few days ago. What's the, well, Brian, I don't have it, but can you give it to me, please? I think my phone is dead. Good. Yeah, my phone is dead. I know Meyer and Brown. Meyer, Meyer Brown. has it down too. Yeah. Do you remember your old phone number? Hold on, I got a right slow. You're good. the number you had when you started here? Yes. Would you switch services or? Yeah, I'm with Verizon. I was with Straight Talk. Oh, I gotcha. You better deal with Verizon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
that's what I really want to talk to you about. And that's what I'm saying. You can help yourself, dude, or you can... Wayne, I did, I did tell him that I was leaving. Right, right. I did tell him that. Right. But, I mean, honestly, that... The only one that I literally saw at the door was... Mm -hmm. That might have been at the time that they were out there because that all makes sense because I did hear the door open. I looked back there, and I told him away from the door. He, moved, he did move the trash can back. Mm -hmm. And that's when I did focus on, start focusing on the front. Yeah. I feel like a fucking idiot. Yeah, you let your guard down, man. You let the, definitely, that's, you know, part of your duties is to be cognizant of where you're trained 100% of the time, especially inside of a pod, man, when you're by yourself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But like I said, the, I'm going to circle back to you. The problem I has is not one, two, but not three. Out, but three out there. Not, there's, there were several out there, but not one or two inmates talked to, that I talked to tonight. But several inmates said that they one knew he was leaving because you had told them straight up you're leaving. Mm -hmm. And two said they were to deal out with you to get to retrieve something from that from that office space. Now that no, that is a definite no. They, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you what they I, said. I agree. And uh, I mean they they read out their statement. It's on audio video. I mean obviously you know I'm not and we're all human here, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're inmates. You're correct. Also, you work for us. Yeah. I am. I, I do want to take your word over their word. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. However, there's more than just one or two guys saying this is this is how it went down. Uh, investigator Disconnect here um, retrieved a lot of chirp messages and stuff talking about that same issue mm -hmm. and talking about you. And there's also uh, another female uh, corrections officer that they talked about and another male corrections officer. Was told a totally different conversation, but the conversation about you specifically was that you was leaving and that you agreed to let them get something out of that office space there. Yeah, that I never did. That's and that's the big issue we have here. Yes, sir. I mean, that's just a fucking huge issue. It is. And like I told you at the beginning of this, I'm 100% honest with you, man. Um, that's a federal issue in itself because we have federal inmates here. We yes, have sir. a different set of rules, you know, or another second set of rules, I should say. That we have to go by to adhere to, yes, other than just the state and then the local stuff. Yeah, that so, one that one thing was never asked because I would have It was asked. Down. It was asked, and they re, and they uh, re, re, reviewed video back uh, several days that you worked and you've had interactions with the guys that I talked to tonight, the inmates I talked to tonight, mm -hmm. face to face. Because I honestly don't ever remember anything like that happening. Because if I did, that would not that would not have happened. But what I'm, I'm basically what I'm telling you is that it did happen. There's chart messages to back that information up. Mm -hmm. There's more than one inmate that's backing that information up. You know what I'm saying? And they're all pointing at you. And I get it. They think they may get something because they're inmates and you're a CO and they can get you in trouble kind of shit. And sometimes I just let them fucking run their mouth and talk and just talk bullshit. However, there's more than one or two, like I said. And I know so, how that looks on my part. Yeah, it looks bad. And it looks I, fucking I, horrible. It looks fucking horrible. So then... What we've been doing for the last several hours is going back over the videos and watching your interactions with inmates and watching how you do your your pill call and, and letting guys reach over at a point now and stuff. That should never happen. You know, you should keep your space, keep your distance. But the biggest thing, dude, is the chirps and they're talking. And they got you pretty much fucked in the corner right now. But the sheriff told me tonight that if I was able to speak with you and you would come clean and tell me 100% what was going down, that I could help you. Although it is legally permissible for investigators to lie during interrogations and even to suggest that evidence exists that doesn't, it is not legal for the detective to use statements that are known for being coercive. One example of a coercive tactic is promises of leniency. But the sheriff told me tonight that if I was able to speak with you and you would come clean and tell me 100% what was going down, that I could help you. Yes, sir. He, I mean, he said if you do not, then I'm, I'm not to help you. You understand what that means? Yes, sir. Okay. That's why I'm here and I'm begging you again, dude. All I want is the truth. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, the chirps aren't going to lie. All these guys aren't going to lie about it. I don't inmates talk bullshit. They may get a fucking joint in the jail. They may get whatever. They're going to talk about, hey, such just bring it in, such just bring it in. Um, cell phones was a big thing that was they was talking about also. Your name came up in the cell phone, a couple cell phone cases. Um, or a couple cell phones that was found in the jail. Your name was on some chirps from the cell phones. Oh, on that incident? Yeah. And it's kind of ironic that you changed your phone number. I get it. If you're saving money, you went from 
uh, one one cell phone service to another. I don't blame you there. However, on, on my training experience, kind of shows me how you're just trying to distance yourself, get rid of that cell phone, get a new cell phone, and start over. Like, quit fucking me, guys. I'm saying, here you leave this place. I get where you're going on that one. So, but yeah, I, will, I literally went to Verizon and got me a new phone gotcha. because I had an LG style one. I just, like I said, gotcha. I wanted a new and gotcha. better phone. I got gotcha. you. I mean, if you literally want one, I'll even bring in my old phone, sh show you messages and shit, whatever it has to take. Yeah. Because I honestly don't ever remember that ever happening. And like I said. What well, you should remember, because it's happened here recently. Like I said, in the last couple of hours, we've been reviewing videos and your interactions with inmates and stuff. And like I said, if it's just one guy standing there saying "fuck him," that's the old blah blah blah. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. We, we wouldn't even. I wouldn't even call Bubba about it. He wouldn't even call me about it. No way. But we wouldn't bother yeah. sheriff with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people hooping and there's a lot of people hooping and hollering in there. And like I said, I was trying to focus on. Yeah, right. I mean, but not just that instance. Though. We're talking about others. Yeah, so. I, I get where you're going. Yeah. Um. So again, dude, I I want to I want to tell you I'm I'm offering this opportunity for you to tell me the truth about this. Stuff. I, mean, I I am telling you the truth, hand to God. I did not okay. say any anything about them going out to the desk and get some get some. Okay. I would never do that, and I do have too much pride in myself. Do you have any kiddos? No, sir. Any girlfriend, wife? No, sir. Shit. How old are you? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Mm. Pretty smart so far, then I guess. I mean, I honestly feel like an idiot, and that could have been handled a lot better. But it's like I said, with what went down. Yeah. It was, it's, yeah. I mean, I swear up and down, I did not hear anybody say anything like that. Well, no, but not to say or, or whisper or mumble. I mean, it's a deal that worked out with you, and you allowed them to come out there to get the key. Okay, I know that for a fact. I'm gonna put it on the table, man. What deal? You made a deal with inmates with a with two specific actually one specific and, right. and he's got a cold heart though he was brought into the listen to me he right. brought into the mix but they knew he was leaving and whatever they said or did to get to you man I understand I get it I do that job fucking sucks in the jail mm -hmm. I do not want to work in that fucking jail I don't want to be in the jail but dude they got you dead of rights there's no fucking if ass or buts about it I mean I honestly like working here but I mean I literally don't even remember talking about a deal or anything with anybody. That's on every that is on everything I stand for. Everything I stand for. I do not remember telling anybody anything or talking to anything about a deal with anybody. Because I have too much pride in myself. Right, I understand that. You say you don't remember, but you're saying it didn't happen. Are you saying it didn't happen at all or saying you don't remember? I'm telling I mean if I were, if I remembered it It was here pretty recent. It was in the last couple weeks, yeah. Because, I mean, I know better than that shit. Right. I know better than You should have better than get yourself involved that far into the pod by taking blood pressure. I should have. And letting those guys dig all over your machine, you know what I'm saying? I should have had another officer in there with me. Well, I mean, I admitted to him first off, yeah, I shouldn't have gone in there by myself. But at the same time, the reason why that door was propped open was because I was not leaving myself trapped in there with 32 other inmates when there was no other officer on that floor. No other officer on the floor? No. Where was the officer that was for the floor, though? I have no idea. I know I had radioed down, you know, I had radioed that I was going to go in there and ask him for help, but nobody came. But are they supposed to come when you radio that you're going in? For well, why the fuck would you go yeah, in before the officer was there? You know what I mean? I was concerned for the well-being of the inmate. If that, if that's protocol, if that's policy, yeah, you probably should have, absolutely. I mean, you should never let yourself get overwhelmed by that many guys to distract you while other guys are doing other shit, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But uh, I'm going to have you hold it for a second here. I'm going to go get those uh, chirps, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a second to think about it because I... Like I said, dude, I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to stick it to you. Like I said, I hope you look at me and think I'm being honest. Dude, I, ap I appreciate you for being honest with I me because, I mean, it's like, it's like I said, if I had known that, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. H hands down. Yeah, but like you said. I, I know I, like, just from that, I fucked up and I feel like an idiot. But I know my, you know, I know better than that. All right, uh, you stay here, you come out. I'm come out. Okay. Uh, I'll be with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll be back in a few. Let me go get a uh, group. See if he's got to print that stuff out. And uh, I, we'll get there. I think it's fun. You need a drink or anything, buddy? Yeah, we're All right. It's not going to lock on you.
stupid and plus I've worked too fucking hard and shit. So I honestly don't have any idea what the fuck, like what the fuck you're talking about. I mean, I appreciate him being honest with me and everything. It's just I honestly don't have any idea what he's talking about. Well... Exactly. 
step by step what transpired between inmates, between you, between the whole you know set of people, then we're looking at a different a different avenue, you know, yeah. a lot better avenue I mean, versus a, the alternative, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I'll do whatever I have to pr prove. Right. But I mean, as far as that shit goes, like I said, I know better. And if I would, you know, if I heard, had I heard something like that, I would have told them flat out no. You don't know what? No, I said I would have told them flat out no. Oh, flat out no. Okay. Because people will try to get me to, you know, pass contraband to this fucking block, this fucking block, la di da di da. Have they? And it's just like when he's trying to get me to pass message messages to his old lady. Who I was this? Who is? Do you know who his old lady was? I don't even remember because I was just like. Mm. Do you remember where it was at? For me. I mean, do do you, do you remember where he was trying to send it? He's trying. He's trying to get his girlfriend or whatever in 4D to write him back. Who? In 4D. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's just one thing about the doors. They can always talk through the damn doors. This detail is extremely important to this case. This is the layout. There are cell blocks inside of pods. This would be the layout of, say, pod four. There would be four cell blocks labeled A, B, C, and D. The doors adjoin each cell block as well as entry from the corrections officer's hallway and the corrections officer's pod is in the center in a horseshoe shape. According to Mr. Lowe, there were support columns for the pod office on each side adjacent to an open area. The middle between these columns was open. On one of the columns, there was the key in question hanging on that column. David has made it very clear in interviews that those keys did not belong to him. But if those keys were the keys that opened the adjoining doors in the cell blocks, that would effectively make sense in the lawsuit um, alleging that there were rapes because on pod four, the cell blocks to the men and women's are shared. They're joined to one another. A and B being men, C and D being women. And as you can clearly hear in the discussion between Mr. Lowe and Investigator Disponet, what they are discussing is concerning the people talking through the doors, meaning the adjoining doors between the cell blocks, which could also be the doors that the key was to. I mean, that's just one thing about the doors. They can always talk through the damn doors. I mean, do, do, you, do you remember where he was trying to send it? He's trying, he's trying to get his girlfriend or whatever in 4D to write him back. Who? In 4D? Yes. Oh, okay. And you don't remember who his girlfriend was? No. I don't think I remember what it looks like. Or He's the dude with the tattoos all over him. Skinny, tall. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. He's got tattoos all over his face. Yes. Yeah, okay. That right. was on Suicide Watch where I literally had to tell him to get me, when I got into it with him over the fucking board down booking. Like, I get where he's going. It makes me look, it makes me look bad. David, I give you a chance to be honest with you, buddy. Alright? Yes, sir. So now I'm going to tell you a fuck. Not only do I get messages on your, on the chirps back and forth and shit from going from her to the names you're giving to the guys in the pod and the fucking. I had to stop him printing the chirps and shit. Um, dude, I need to know right now, I'm telling you right fucking now, who you told us to come outside and why you turned your back to it. That's going to save your ass. If not, dude, you're going to fucking handcuffs and we're out of here. I'm giving you a last chance to come clean. You understand? I am. 
Don't tell me. Don't lie to me, son. I'm telling you, it's right there. I got a whole file of it, black and white, especially who's fucking rover running her gums now. And I don't care that you know that she's running her gums, because she's a fucking inmate. What I care about is you're wearing the badge. You're representing us, you're representing the department, you're representing this county and the sheriff. And you're fucking sitting there lying to me. We're done with the lying. You understand? Which one of these motherfuckers, or you tell me who that you made a fucking deal with. If you want to save your ass, you tell me who you made a fucking deal with. I didn't. Give me your handcuffs. Hold on. Dude, I'm done. I don't have time for this. Dude, I'm six hours on my day off. I'm done with the bullshit. I mean... If you're going to save your ass, now's your time to do it, or I'm done. And we the people better shine right here. I know he was coming up. I know he tried coming up and talking to me about some bullshit when I was doing this stuff. I want to know who, who talked to you about it and what you're doing. I want to know who you made the fucking deal with. That's where we're going with this. Well, yeah, I know. Like, it's, like I, it's like I'm telling you the truth. Okay. It's I'm, not like you're telling the truth. I want the truth, no, dude. I, I'm done. I, I don't mean it like that. I okay. am telling you the truth. Thank you for telling the truth. Continue I, on. I am telling What did he do? What's his fucking name? Because I don't have my glasses on. What, what, did, what did you do with him? Here again, we run into another very important detail. If you watch, you will see that Donovan points at the suspect in question, leading the suspect in the interrogation to pick a certain individual from a lineup sheet. I know he was, I didn't really hear him or anything last night. Was it? No, no. Can you just, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna listen. I didn't really hear him or anything last night because it's like I said before, everybody was up hooping and hollering. Right. And I know he came. I know he came up and started talk. I know he was talking to me about something. This time. What was he talking to you about? I honestly don't. I honestly don't know because he was like for me to disconnect with everybody else okay. who was fucking hollering. Okay. Because I. I so I, you're, you're walking me around a circle again, okay? I want to know who you made the fucking deal with, and if it's no, picture, if his picture's not here, I want you to write his name there. He, he was literally up talking to me about something, and I couldn't hear it exactly. Okay. Like, I am on being 110% honest with you. I swear. I swear to you. I didn't... I swear to you I'm not lying to you. I, I, I'm I, coming at you man to man 100% straight up. And I'm coming... You're not. You're trying, to, you're trying to figure a way to fucking not tell me 100% the truth by not snitching on this motherfucker. I'm telling you, dude, it's a chance, it's, it's, here's the difference right now. You walking out here in handcuffs and going right to the same fucking pod these guys are in, <clears throat> or me taking you to Floyd County fucking jail and booking you as a federal prisoner. Because you made a deal with one of these, two of these guys. I wonder who the fuck you made the deal with. And why you allowed them to go out there because you're two weeks out, you're quitting. I get it, they bent you, they got to you. It happens. It's happened before. But now's the time to save your ass. It ain't time to save your ass tomorrow when you're fucking call the prosecutor or the judge and get a warrant for your arrest and come snatch you up because you lied to me. If you want to save your ass, right now is the time to do it. Because I know these, these two, like I said, were, talk, were talking to me yesterday. Right. And I, and I seen him sit at the, the door last night. When so because my hands fucked? Well, I'll do it less. This guy right here. Yes. I'm going to circle his fucking... And I've seen... This guy right here. And I've seen, and I've seen them... Like I said, I've seen him at the door. He was holding it open. Right. He was holding it open because you told him what? You're almost there, buddy. You're almost there. You smoke a chew? You Do smoke I? a chew? Do you smoke a chew? I smoke. But I mean, like, look. You're almost there, man. You're almost saving your ass. This is on. Them fucking chirps are fucking crazy. You're almost saving your ass point, though. But I mean, I. Like, I, I am being honest. Okay. And, I remember specifically these two do talk Correct. Okay. Here's what I want to know. I honestly, Here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know. Who did you make the deal with to say, yes, you can leave when I turn my back? That's what you done, and that's the deal that was made. Who did you make that deal with? Well, it might have been him. No, I don't want to know might have been. Who did you make the deal with that says, yes, I'll turn my back and you guys can get out? Okay. And what, what, did, what kind of deal did you make with him? I need you to tell me. I know what you've done because it's in the chirps and it's in the enemies. Well, I mean, to. I literally don't remember what he was saying because I was checking his blood pressure. Right. I, I might have shaken my head. Yes, I don't know. To what? 
what did he say to you? I was, I was toning everybody else out. Okay. And that's why I was telling everybody that literally that they needed to keep it down. Right. I mean, I literally, that's what I'm trying to get at. No, I'm trying, trying to know what you and me need to get at is the truth. I, I am, I'm telling you. I am telling you the straight so up. So what deal did you make with him that you just that you just talked about? I honestly don't know because I literally could not hear him with all the inmates yet. All the inmates yelling and everything. Is he the only one you made a deal with? You didn't make it with this guy or anybody else? Not that I honestly recall. Okay. I mean, it's like that. I am. Yes. Okay. Because those two were the only ones that were acting fishy in the pot. That was two were the only. Well, ones the, the, the only two that's been stuck with you for the last week because they knew you was leaving. They used a short timer, and they took advantage of that. They took advantage of you. I'm sure. I mean, I, like I said, I here's, here's the thing. Did they pay you any money? No, they did not. Did they promise you anything? No. Like, hey, I'll give you a piece of this on a dope or girls no, or anything. Tell you that. Did they threaten you? No. Did they threaten your family? No. So why the fuck would you allow these guys to do what they've done? Do you hate this department that bad that you're like, hey, fuck it, this is my last two days, I'm going to bounce out of here? Honestly, I love this department. But, I mean, I, it's like I said, I really... You do know what you said. You do know what he said. And I, that's just a picture, and that's your boys that you made a deal with right there in the pot, in that, what the fuck do you call that? Pot office. A pot office. Yeah. That's them in the pot office after these two guys that you told me to circle, Mr. X and Mr. to allow at least one of those guys to go out and to get something out of that pot office. What did you tell them to go get? You tell me what you told them to go get. I know you're being 100% honest with me. And we, probably, and we we'll end this right now. You tell me what they have to get or what you told them to get. And I know you're 100% truthful with me by the by the messages, by the inmates I interviewed, and by you telling me the same thing. I, I don't even know what they got. What did they ask you to get? Or what did they say, hey, what, what's here, what's there? I honestly don't even... You, you're there. We the people. God damn it. I'm going to no, get am. tattoos. I ain't get mad at you now. That fucking tattoo is bad. No, That's what I'm you're looking the, at. I'm being completely You're honest. not. You're not. No, I swear... If I go get the whole video of just that, I which is what they're doing now. They, I don't even remember what they asked for or anything. I don't. But you said yes. You nod your head yes they, that they could get out of the pot. We know you let them do that. You and I agree to that, correct? Because that's what they did. Well, and that's I, mean, what I don't even know do. what they were asking. I don't even know what they were asking, but I nodded my head, I nodded my head to him. To say and yes. You, you guys can bounce. Okay, I'll, I'll admit to it. Then tell me what you told them to go get. I don't, I honestly don't. If you tell me what you told them they could get, I will know that you're being 100% truthful with me and that you're not bullshitting me and just fucking trying to hey, bullshit your way not, out of this. I am not bullshitting my way out of this. Okay. I honestly don't remember what, what they got. I well, honestly, you don't even remember what they asked to get? Because I mean, it's, like it's just like I said, a lot of them were talking. And right. They, yeah, I admit, you know, I shook, nodded my head, and I was, like I said, I was telling them to keep it down when I was checking for blood pressure. Right. And he's good to go. He's, he's fine. He's just a fucking boy. He was trying to get you I mean, in there. I get, I get how he was part of it. I get how this looks and everything. It looks fucking bad because you know why? You're lying to me. All I need is you to tell me the truth. If you tell me what they asked you to go get, I will know you're telling me 100 percent truthful. If you keep bullshitting me, lying to me, I'm gonna call the sheriff. Say he's fucking lying. I don't believe him. You, well, I mean, you need to do what you need to do. I don't remember what. I don't remember what they. So what did you nod your head yes to? That's on video. The second time you came in there, because the first time you yeah, came in, they couldn't get it done, and then you come back and made another trip in there, and that's when they left the pot again. So they made two trips. You allowed them to make two trips. What did he ask you to go get? Several things taken, but if you tell me one thing that you go get, I'll know you're being humped and truth me, and we're going to walk out this fucking door. Mm -hmm. I know a few of them were asking for indigent kits in there. Indigent kits? What else? That didn't pop up on the radar. They didn't get it the first time. They went back the second time. When you come back in to allow them to go get it the second time, because they wasn't successful, and they told you that, and you're like, "Fuck, okay, 
He left, the elevator he came back in, and they went out again. Correct. I, Correct. I was actually at the elevator, and then the machine came on. And then you went back in. And then I went back in. Right. And then did the same fucking routine, and you agreed And that's when I noticed. You kept your back specific. Now tell me if I'm wrong. When you walked in, instead of staying right here by the door and doing your thing, going to the first table, sit down, hey, take a blood pressure. You intentionally went a little bit further, correct? And you okay. kept, you went a little bit further into the pod. You kept your back to the door. And when they was asking you questions, you are like, yes. I, I, your nod's on there and you actually look at it. You actually make eye contact. So yeah. you, you intentionally went in a little further so they could do what they could do, get out of the pod. And when it's said and done, when it's said and done, they come back in, shit's wrapped up, you take your blood pressure and your bounce. Correct? Would you agree to that? That you intentionally went further into that pod so they could have time to get out of that pod? Would you at least agree to that? Yes or no? Is that truthful? I don't want to put words. Now, what would you do here? If you answered yes, you would be admitting to doing it intentionally. And if you said no, then you would be saying that you did not go further into the pod. I don't want to put words in my mouth, but that's what I think. I mean, yeah. But I mean, I really, like I said, I walked in there. <clears throat> and I know they were asking me questions also about the blood pressure, the blood pressure yeah. and stuff when I was taking Just bullshit talk, small talk, bullshit talk. But there was already a plan devised. What I can't determine, what baffles me is, was that plan made like as soon as you got in there with these guys, or is it already something you talked about? Because we've been reviewing video from the last week and a half, two weeks. Well, I'm, I don't want to lie to you. The last week, because we haven't went back two weeks yet, because I told you I'm going to lie to you. But for the last week, there's been interaction with some of these guys. Is that when you devised the plan, or was it the day you went in there last night to take blood pressure? I got to you, son. Honestly, yeah, I don't even remember, but I know, I, like I said, I went in there and took his blood pressure and everything. Right, right. But I know the. I but you went in there to take that blood pressure because that was made up. That he, his blood pressure is not is, is irrelevant. You went in there to allow these guys to leave the pod. I know there was the other there was the other one that I checked because after I was done, they were all they right. Were, they were all. In but there. that was part of the plan, correct? That's not that's not. They had you come back in there to do the blood pressure because that's how they knew they could get out. We know that. Well, I mean, they that's were, exactly what they told me in the interview, and that you agreed to do that. I mean, I know they were all there really asking me to check their blood pressure. Right. And I kept telling them, I kept telling them no. And then when they were asking me questions about when I was doing this and the other guys, mm -hmm. that may have been that was probably when one of them was talking to me about that, and I shook my head yes. But honestly, I. So. So you're going to tell me, though, that this plan wasn't preconceived a couple days before. You, you're telling me that when you went in there with the, either did the pill call? No, because, I mean, that's like I said, he was, up, he was up there asking me, and I don't, like I said, I don't recall what he was asking, but I was just nodding my head to it and then nodding my head to another question that was asked about the blood pressure. So I'm interested in the question he was asked, and I know you know what he asked. Well, I mean, I, uh, I, literally, I literally did not hear what he wanted to grab. But you knew they was leaving that pod. And they told me in the church messages between inmates don't they don't give a fuck about the COs. They don't give a fuck about these other inmates. Wait, this I, guy don't give two fucks about none of these guys. This guy don't care about none of these guys. All they want to do is get over on the COs and all the other inmates. Wait, I'll admit that, yeah. Yeah, you'll admit what? That they left the pod to go get whatever they were gonna get. But they told you what they were gonna get. I didn't hear what they were gonna get though. But why, why would you let those guys go out of that pod and put your coworkers in danger? What if you had a coworker walking down that hallway and he's one of these guys that got out, picked up a fucking broom handle or a mop bucket and bashed him out of the fucking head and then overtook the jail with you in it? Why would you allow that to happen? You said you love this job, man. That's part of it, protecting your fellow officers, male and female. And we have to protect these inmates, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they're inmates, they're still people. we got to protect them. That by allowing those guys to go out and retrieve stuff from your secure location, it's not protecting the jail, it's not protecting your, your fellow workers. Yes, like I said, I know these, I know the, the, this guy was asking me, asking me questions. Like I said, I just nodded my head, but I couldn't exactly hear. That shit right there, you know what that shit is? You know when you see that shit on movies and TV? Yeah, That's yeah. a bad fucking day. That's a bad day for your co-workers. That's a bad day for you. 
that's a bad day for Clark County Jail. It's a bad day for Clark County Sheriff's Office because you allowed that to happen. Why? What did they promise you? What did they give you? I didn't get, you know, I haven't gotten anything. Nothing at all? No. They didn't promise you nothing? No, no. money on your books, nor no money on a card, no money sitting in the mailbox. So my family's yeah. going to take care of you. I'll even show you my bank account. And can I see your cell phone again since we're, since we're on the truth row here, right? Yeah, I mean, if you want... No, 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 I don't want to look into it. Just sit down right there because I want you to... This cell phone right here, the yeah. same cell phone. I, not this identical, but this cell phone. See the IEM numbers and SIM numbers? Yeah. We found some cell phones in this jail that look just like this cell phone. What's going to happen when I run those IMEI numbers and they come back to you want to purchase them at a Walmart or a, or a Kroger's or a, a Circa or whatever? You're going to be in more trouble, right? Well, yeah, but they won't come... They won't come back to me because, like I said, I didn't do anything like that. You didn't bring. You didn't bring trouble. So we're, we're on truth. Yeah, look, I, here, let me let me talk because you're talking. I'm talking. You're not listening. I'm not listening. So I'll talk and I'll let you talk. We found a couple cell phones in the jail. Interviewing the inmates, specifically one male and two females, they said that you may or may not have run phones in. It's ironic to me in the investigative discipline that this phone right here is the same style and the same type of phone that was snuck into the jail. And did come in somebody's ass in because that's too, that's, in my opinion, that's too big for somebody getting. Now we're talking flip phone days. I've seen it happen. I've seen charges. I've not seen the iPhones or iPads, these electronic phones in there. So in a couple of days when I get that information back and pull a video from whatever store they bought at, I'm not going to see your face there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to see a person that's related to you that's bought this mm -hmm. phone to give you, correct? No. You sure? Yes, I didn't buy any phones or even bring them in here. You can even look at the IMEI. Okay, and you didn't them. bring no phones into this no. facility to give to somebody. No, because usually what happens when I when I usually what I do is I usually just leave the phone in the pot off. Phone in the pot off. Ninety yeah. percent of the time. Yeah. I, and I don't know if it's a good policy or not, but in my opinion I don't think there should be any cell phones at all in the jail with anybody. That avoids the bullshit, you know what I'm saying? There's always some inmate trying to say, Hey, let me use your phone, let me call my honey, let me call my mom, let me call my dad and I get it. But circling back to these guys here, what 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 finally got to you to make you allow those guys to do what they done? If they didn't promise you money, they didn't promise you female intimacy or some girlfriend or a blow job or they didn't promise you a car or promise you something on the outside, why would you do that? Why would you turn your back and let those guys normally turn your back and let those guys out? Yeah, whatever they're going to get. What, what, if, what if you guys store guns out there? What if you store right here? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, but you let them go out. If you knew they were going to get something, you should know what they're going to get, correct? Again, here, there's no possibility for a correct answer. Because if you said no, what you're saying is that you don't think they could have gotten something if they got out. And if you say yes, then you are admitting that you allowed them to get out to do it. I think you know they're going to get I do. I honestly do not. That, that just could have been a bad day for you. I mean, your own, your own safety, number one. You know what I'm saying? You, not let alone the jail and your coworkers and the damn inmates that we have the right, or that we have a responsibility to protect. You know what I mean? That's the kind of oath you took when you put that uniform on. Disappoint anybody. I really am. Just, uh, I, I think you're about 95 percent, 98 percent of the truth with me right now. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't want to be rude, but my girl's just sorry you're anniversary good. today. You're good. And you're still gonna be. Yeah, I'm gonna be a while. And they didn't promise you nothing, pay you nothing. Mm -hmm. That, that and, and be honest with you, that'd be the first time we've had corrections officers in our facility and other facilities before that's been paid to bring in drugs, bring in contraband, to bring in phones, to bring in something that mom made for me. No, I have too much pride in myself to do that. Well, no, also not too much pride. Now, easy with that word pride and, and, and we the people because you allow these guys to get out on purpose, correct? So, you know, say easy when you keep saying pride and bring that up because now I'm kind of teetering on what made you what made you sound like fuck it. Because if you put your two weeks in, you're like, this is my last two nights to help these guys or what? I don't know who that is. I'm going to shut this door. I'm going to shut the door. Because ain't no way else business what we're doing here. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what was it that finally you just like, I don't give a fuck? What, what, what made you do that? I, I do give a fuck. Yeah, but why'd you let those guys get out like that? Obviously, something something happened in a, in a, in a short amount of time. You're like, you know, either, whether it's like, I got two days left, or uh, it's not your last night or tomorrow night. 
mean, I had two days left, so I couldn't let these guys get a fucking stapler or a pen or a highlighter. It's not a good day, man. I still think you know what they was going to get. I wish you. I, I'm just telling you because, like I, I said, I understand where you're going. They, they've all told me exactly. Hey, this is what he said. This is what we said, and he's like, yes. And I'm like, okay. This for that can tell you. Is also, he reviewed the video with me. We go back before we even talk to you because we're not taking their fucking word. We want to make sure our guys are right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we go back with the video. I'm like, fuck. Here's these guys walks up to you. They tell you what's up. You're like, yeah. And I'm like, fuck. So then we do a little bit more digging, investigate. Now we got more cameras to fucking watch. And when you go back in the second time, we're like, fuck, we didn't get this. We didn't get what we needed the first time. You're like, fuck. You go back in deeper than you normally do, and you turn your back to the door, and you let those guys go out again. They get their shit done. The old man. I'm not 100 percent sure because I've not seen him face to face. But the old man gives you the not. I think is this guy here involved in it. he involved in it? He's the old man that was standing to your right hand side. When it's all said and done, he shakes his head, tells you we're good to go. You wrap your shit up and you leave. I honestly don't recall. You don't know which one he was. At any point in time, dude, I, I'm in a pod and I begin I go over it like very occasionally. I'm on a fucking swivel. I'm looking around. I'm not going in like you did and staying stationary, looking right at the fucking wall. I'm watching that door. You know why? That's my way out. I mean, that's my safety. You know what I'm saying? That's another uh, clue or indicator that we had that you was working with these guys in here. I just don't know why. I just don't know why you done it, buddy. It wasn't for money. It wasn't for gain. It was just like you said you had you, you had uh, trouble with your coworkers and stuff because you pissed off with them. You like, fuck it. I'm going let these guys get what they want. Honestly, I don't know. You don't know? Just... I, mean, I, I, I guess maybe me and you being man and, and this and that, I mean, we kind of want to answer, you know what I mean? I don't know, usually don't fit my bill. Either, I, I, I either I did it or I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Or, yes, we done this, or no, we didn't do that. I just, when somebody says, I don't know, I'm like, I usually throw a bullshit flag. I'm like, I know why I did this, or I know why I drank this, or I know why I went here, I know why I did you know what I'm saying? And usually, it's over money. It's usually they, somebody gets paid. That's big time. Or uh, they know somebody in jail. A corrections officer may know somebody. We live in a small community here, about 150,000, but the jail community is a small community. You know, people come and go a lot all the time, you know what I mean? And sometimes um, inmates and corrections officers get close, they, they develop a rapport. And the next thing you know, it, they, they think they're friends, but it's not. It's these inmates all day long, 24 7, they think of ways to get at you. They think ways to pick you apart, whether it's your tattoos, whether it's your appearance, whether it's your hair, your, your, how you present yourself. They look and, and dig until they find a way to get into you. And that's what I want to know because I want to be able to pass it on to the next man or woman that works here. What what did they do that got to you? Was it you just, was it you just that pissed that you're leaving and fuck the place? Did they pay you money? Did they promise you something? Yeah, that's what, you know what I'm saying? Well, none of that already. None of that. None, just, just like fuck it, go on and get your shit. And, Get it over with. That's it. They didn't promise you nothing. No. Didn't take care of you for nothing. No. All right, man. Hold tight for me. I'll be back in a few minutes. I gotta make a few phone calls, and then uh, we'll go from there. And you're good on the cell phones, right? I ain't go fucking two, three days now. To find something. No. Do you know this chick? Tell you the sheriff's gonna be disappointed, man, that you allowed that to happen, that you knew it was gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when you when you when you started this job at corrections officer, it's, you take an oath to uphold the law in the jail, mm -hmm. uphold the law of Clark County, and for the citizens of Clark County, and main the law for our boss, your boss, my boss, his boss, sheriff. No, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He tries to hire the best in here. He, he ain't gonna be happy with that. So, give, me, <coughs> give me a few minutes. I'll be right back with you. Okay. okay. Computer. Yeah, 
about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be clear. All I want is the truth. All you want to tell me is the truth. That's all I want. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I don't want to course nothing out of you. All I want is the truth. Do you want to tell me the truth, Mr. Lowe, or not? Do you want to tell me the truth or not? <laughs> 